You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing our top 10 raw moments in, I guess, honor of the 25th anniversary yes. special. Um, these are obviously our opinions here. Also, a little side note, um, there was a pretty large gap of time between when we were watching re- wrestling when we were younger mm-hmm. and when we picked it up again. So pretty much, not that I don't think anything too big happened between, what, 2005 and 2013 or so? I wasn't really watching, so I couldn't tell you. No, I'm, I'm just, I mean, <laughs> in terms no. of, like, just things we've heard of. No. I don't think anything really spectacular no. happened, Mm-mm. minus, like, Vince blowing himself up. Yeah. But, and uh, our number 10 is kind of something that we wanted to, I guess, be a little more recent. Well, yeah, it's it, and it's probably one of the bigger, mm-hmm. uh, just out of shock value. Yes. So uh, let's, so, let's, let's get, get into it. Let's get to it. Number 10, Kevin Owens' universal title win. Yeah, so there was a fatal four-way. Uh, this happened on August 29, 2016. This is the day, a week after? It was eight or, days after. It was eight, yeah, time, yeah, right. Um, so... The Finn Balor had gotten hurt. Actually, it had to be longer than that. that. Yeah. I don't know. That's weird the way that it worked out. I don't remember the the setup for the, the actual match. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just picked people. I think that's... Wasn't there Wasn't there no actual... No, because they, they were qualifying to be in the match at SummerSlam, but there was none oh, for yeah. the fatal the okay. four-way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they had the match. It was Big Cass, mm-hmm. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Kevin Owens. Yes. Off the bat, everyone's like, it's going to be Roman. Yep. Uh, and then there's a few people who thought maybe it would be Rollins. Mm-hmm. Um, so the match goes on. It was an elimination, right? It was an elimination yes. match. Cass gets eliminated first. And then I think Rollins and Reigns are fighting outside. Mm-hmm. And Reigns gets attacked by Triple H. Um, he gets pinned by Rollins. And then it's just Seth and Owens. So everyone's like, oh, Triple H's team with Seth again. Mm -hmm. And so then Triple H will get him the title. Um, The two of them are like kind of celebrating in the ring. All of a sudden, Triple H turns around, hits a pedigree Mm -hmm. on um, Rollins. And then Owens has this look of just disbelief on his face. Yep. Probably one of the most genuine looking reactions. Absolutely. that, That I've seen. Yeah. And then... He pins Rollins, and he's the new Universal Champion. Mm -hmm. And to this day, still the longest reigning? Or is Brock Lesnar taking that? uh, Well, he, what was it? August August through February? Or is it March? March, March. March, okay. I guess. Close. Close, yeah. Yeah. Um, Either way, uh, this was a big moment for Kevin Owens Mm -hmm. because This, this put him, like, obviously in the... This elevated him to the main event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because he was a solid mid Carter who mm-hmm. we kind of really didn't give too much thought to because they really didn't push him too much. So obviously he was a solid worker. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you just need stuff like this mm-hmm. to really to solidify him as a main event. <sighs> yeah. Um, this was also a big deal because it led to triple H's and Seth Rollins feud that led to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Um, that included the, that was takeover. Houston, I guess, last I, year? I don't remember. The one before the Royal Rumble where Seth Rollins invaded and he called should, that yeah. Triple H. That was mm-hmm. pretty cool. It was very unexpected. Yep. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, that was our number 10. Yes. Number 9, the final Monday Nitro. Yeah. Um, this was kind of, like, big, not in, like, a... Well, it was pretty shocking at yeah. the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was... Um, but not... It wasn't, like... Something that happened on the Raw, mm-hmm. or on, yeah, it was on the Raw. It was more of just the idea that now WCW really isn't a thing anymore. Yes, WWE um, owns the entire company, and what are they going to do? They, well, what is going to be the next step here? Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, this happened on March 26, 2001. Yes, I mean, we weren't loyal wcw fans so you know i don't know how they they felt about it you know i mean yeah i was a a predominantly wwf guy Mm -hmm. and you were as well yeah um so but what i believe what happened was um sheen comes out on nitro Mm -hmm. says that oh no that's not what happened vince opened the show right and he says that i bought wcw Mm -hmm. 
And then it kind of cuts to Shane either later on in the night or at that point in time where it says a McMahon did buy WCW, mm-hmm. but it was me, not Vince. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that set up the entire invasion mm-hmm. angle with WCW trying to take over the WWF. Yeah. Which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you think no. about it. Because if they ran their company into the ground, they're going to do the same thing with the new one. <laughs> but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. it's uh, It was a big moment. It was definitely a big shock seeing Vince open a yeah. WCW show. Mm-hmm. And it led this was to... A, this was the end of the Monday Night Wars? Exactly. And, oh. it, and it led to a lot of... A lot of Vince doing whatever he wanted. Yeah. That's what it led to. Mm-hmm. So this was a good and bad here. It's true. All right, number eight. This is a combination of uh, Steve Austin driving down to the ring in the beer truck and Kurt Angle driving down to the ring in the milk truck. Yeah. Well, one of them was kind of just a parody of the other. Right. Um. So Austin, Austin's one happened on March twenty second, nineteen ninety nine, mm. and Angle did it two years later in August twentieth, yes. two thousand one. Um. These are just cool moments that yeah. kind of happened. It was very different. Yeah. So the the Austin one, it was Shane, Vince, and The Rock talking about um, The Rock's match against Austin at WrestleMania 15, the title match where Rock was the champion. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, there had been a feud going on between Austin and The Rock, and Vince and Austin mm-hmm. had the long storyline at this point in time. Austin comes down in a beer truck. Starts yelling, flipping everybody mm-hmm. off. Grabs a hose, hoses down Vince Shane and The mm-hmm. Rock. Beer everywhere. <laughs> Watching them swim in the ring. Yeah, it was it was a uh, great yeah. it was a great uh, picture. Mm-hmm. Now, when Angle did it, the entire alliance, which was all the WCW, mm-hmm. ECW, ECW yeah, Paul Heyman, Austin was in the ring too. Right? Austin yes. Austin had defected mm-hmm. to the um, to the alliance, alliance at yes. this point. You had Stephanie, Shane, mm-hmm. Paul Heyman. They were all in the ring. Angle comes down, who is the leader, technically, of the WWF team. Because mm-hmm. I think The Rock was gone at the time. Yeah, it was like him, Jericho, he, Undertaker, Kane. Well, and... The Rock was part of it. Mm-hmm. But The Rock wasn't there at at that point. Yeah, because they were stretching tight because he was filming stuff, I okay. think. Yeah. Um, so he comes out in the milk truck, and the entire alliance is in the so- ring. And he just sprays right. down everybody with milk. Yeah. It was great. Milkomania. Yeah. So it, it's it's good stuff, you know. Yep. And, it, you know, it's just something that you really just don't see anymore. Yeah. So this was a, a, a good, uh, like I said, just a good some, picture. Yeah, exactly. So number seven, Vince McMahon is revealed as the higher power. Yes. June, this was June 7th, 1999. Mm-hmm. This was more of uh I guess a speculative thing because everybody was wondering who it was going to be. Yeah. And of course it was Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. It was me, Austin. It was me all along. He was trolling before it was a thing. (laughs) That's it. Um, it, because the setup to this was that somebody was in in, like, I guess the leader of the corporate, or was it just the ministry at this I think time? It was, the cor- was it the corporate ministry? Well, no, why, maybe why that, was it yeah, the corporate yeah, then it was the corporate min- ministry, yeah. yeah. So it was the ministry, which was um, the Undertaker, uh, Midian, yeah, all his... the APA. Um, they were all together. And then Vince revealed himself as the higher power, despite the fact that Vince was telling the Undertaker to... What were they trying to do to Stephanie? Like crucify her or whatever? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What the hell? They had her on the the, the cross uh, or whatever. Yeah, the Undertaker's uh, symbol. Cross. Yeah. Um, and then Austin had a saver, and it was all just a ploy to trick Austin. I thought, was the Undertaker trying to marry her or something? I, I don't think remember. at some point yeah. that came. Up. It was a very ridiculous storyline, but like you said, this was kind of a big deal because of just you know. Who was it? Yeah. It was probably one of the bigger, I guess, swerves Mm -hmm. of the Attitude Era. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That's why it was on this list. Mm -hmm. Number six, CM Punk's Pipe Bomb promo. Yeah. Uh, June 27th, 2011. This, while the promo itself wasn't particularly, you know, while it was shocking in the fact that punk was actually given a live mic to say whatever he wanted this 
was kind of to give him the ability to like elevate himself mm. off of you know him like something he did instead of something that was kind of booked Given for to him. him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because basically, what happened here was CM Punk interferes in a John Cena versus R Truth tables match, which is just funny to hear. Yeah. Um, cost thing John Cena in the match grabs the microphone, sits at the top of the ramp, basically says that he hates the idea that John Cena is the guy Mm -hmm. and he thinks that he should be, but he's not appreciated the way he should be. Um, And then he goes on to say how, like, Vince is really just screwing himself over by not pushing the right people and that, um, you know, uh, he said something about Stephanie... And Triple H taking over when Vince uh, eventually leaves, mm-hmm. and um, and then he the mic gets cut off pretty much. Yeah. Um, this led to him being one of the more pop or most popular wrestlers at the time. Led to his really long title reign, and also kind of was one of the earlier, I, I guess, like behind the scenes. Thing. It yeah. kind of made people more aware Where of what was going on, yeah, and backstage politicking mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Because nowadays everyone like shoot interviews and yeah. stuff like that. That really think wasn't that was a th- seven years ago. Yeah, it wasn't really a thing back then, though. Um, not, it wasn't yeah. as pro- pro- not prominent. in mainstream wrestling. That's the yeah. I mean. yeah, yeah. Like obviously stuff like that happened, yeah. but it wasn't the same as it is now. Mm-hmm. So, but, but yeah, this was a that was big, yeah, big thing. Yep. Number five, Mike Tyson comes to Raw. Yeah, January nineteenth, nineteen ninety seven. Mm-hmm. So this was him being named the special enforcer for the Austin Michaels match at yeah. WrestleMania fourteen. Uh, this is one of the earliest, uh, I guess, celebrities. No, yeah, but I don't even know if you can consider Mike Tyson a celebrity. Yeah. In the, as mo- I, I guess he would be. Yeah, but. He was also obviously a major boxer, mm-hmm. so it was kind of like cross promotion between, I guess, what is well, boxing? Is it they have some kind of federation or something? I, yeah, I would assume so. But I mean, he was just like a loose cannon, so you kind of didn't oh, yeah. know what the hell he was going to do. He and fit that, in perfectly it, with the attitude. Era. Absolutely, yes. So, um, at this night in particular, Tyson gets introduced. Um, he's got a ton of his security, I guess, or his people in mm-hmm. the ring. Austin comes down. The two of them stand face to face and, you know, they kind of just pushing and shoving and yeah. just all hell breaks loose. And yeah. then that was when Tyson revealed the, the DX shirt underneath. Yeah. Yeah. So again, the odds were stacked against Austin. Mm-hmm. No surprise. Nope. And, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Number four, Triple H takes over D-Generation X. Yes. So so before we get into it, now, I mean, this was the night after WrestleMania. Yes. This was, you had a whole bunch of new, you know, you had new faces in it and everything like that. Is this when they really established the night after WrestleMania being a uh, a thing, or did that not come till later on? It was probably later on. Yeah. This just happened to be a coincidence. Yeah. Um, so the Royal Rumble, I think it was this year. Then the 98 Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Shawn Michaels had his match against The Undertaker. The Undertaker. And that was when... Really messed up his back. Yep, right onto the casket. Oh. Yeah. Um, so his, I guess, official retirement at the time was supposed to be that WrestleMania yep. match against Austin where he dropped the title. Mm-hmm. Um, so after that night, Austin had won the title. The next night, Triple H comes down to the ring, says that he's taken over as the leader of DX, and he's got a few new members. Mm-hmm. I believe he had China with him. Yeah. Um, he um, announces, or he calls out X-Pac, yep. he, who had just come over from WCW. Yep, and he got to air his grievances on WCW, Eric Bischoff, Hulk yeah. Hogan, everybody. He had a few things to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Them. And that was, that was big at the time. Yeah, because you don't really, there wasn't a whole lot of talking about because WCW talked about WWE more than WWE talked about mm-hmm. WCW. Yep, it was a, a acknowledgement. Yeah. Except when WWF had those really bad videos of, like, Crazy Ted and stuff like that. Or Ted Turner. They made, like... Oh, yeah. But yeah, but that was... That was a little more parody yeah, than no, it I, was. I know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I believe it was later on in the night... Mm, there's a main event. Yeah. 
um, the New Age Outlaws had a match against Chainsaw Charlie mm-hmm. and Mankind, or Cactus, Cactus Jack, Jack, probably, yep. for the Steel the Cage match, right? Steel yes. Cage match. Um, and then Triple H and X-Pac came in to help him out, solidifying the New Age Outlaws as new members mm-hmm. of DX. Uh, just the fact that they were able to lose Shawn Michaels and become the most popular stable in mm-hmm. WWF at yep. the time. They. It's not that they didn't need them, but they Triple H really took the reins. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. What are we up to number three? Yes. Number three. Pillman's got a gun. Uh, it's, uh November fourth, nineteen ninety six. It's probably one of the more infinite, infamous mm-hmm. Raw moments, I'd say, uh, and probably one of like the earliest of the Attitude Era. Yeah, this was really when wwe kind of got to that edgy point this was the first the first thing yeah so uh, this was after the nwa had started because they started what june of 96 uh, i think uh possibly May. i think so pillman was recovering from an ankle injury. yes yes he was at home with i guess his wife or girlfriend or whatever yeah, it was. and austin had he had security and, hired outside the yeah. house and everything like that him and austin had been having back and forth via mm-hmm. satellite yes for like the couple weeks beforehand, I mm-hmm. think. And then he finally had enough. He was going to his house. He was going to take care of him. <laughs> My favorite part of the whole thing was that during this whole interaction, Kevin Kelly was in the, the bushes, bushes outside. outside. <laughs> it, was... <laughs> it was like the weirdest thing. Oh, man. Um, so Austin forces his way into the building. They show Brian Pillman holing a gun. Nine millimeter. Yeah. Hey, then. Dude, did did they have a like a shot fired or was it just them cutting as soon as I think they, they showed they the gun? Yeah, okay. yeah, and then that was it, and it was black, and they're like, "Oh, what happened? Yeah. What happened?" Uh, it was just like one of those moments, like, "What the hell happened? Did Austin just get shot?" Yeah, yeah. nobody so, knew what was going mm-hmm. on. This led to USA, you know, having a whole big thing on what they can and can't do <laughs> on TV. Yeah, which you know, this was the '90s, so it was a different time. It's true. All bets are off. Yeah, pretty much, but so crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, it's true. Um, number two, the debut of Y2J. Yeah, August 9th, 1999. Mm-hmm. So um, for, I don't remember the length of time, but for a stretch of time prior to this debut, mm-hmm. there was a lot of um, like Y2J occurs in X mm-hmm. amount of time. Yeah, And no one knew what it meant because obviously no, was, yeah before the whole y2k thing yeah which well i think it had been brought up before that no no, no yeah, 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 but, yeah yeah um but yeah they were piggybacking yeah yeah obviously um so finally the countdown hit zero it actually happened while the rock was in the ring cutting mm-hmm. a promo jericho comes out makes a big splash by you know having it having a, a verbal having it out verbally with The Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of really showed that, you know, they kind of made a big star out of uh, someone in WCW who wasn't really considered. He was overlooked. Big, yeah. So it was kind of Vince going, you know what? I see something in this guy. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to give him a shot. I'll give him a yeah. shot. What some people come consider it to be the, the victory for WWE. I mean, once he came over, it was... That was it. That was everybody started coming over after that. Yeah, because the, the radicals, radicals were shortly thereafter, yep. and mm-hmm. so yeah, it was uh, it was a big moment, especially uh, for Jericho. Yeah, who's had one of the best careers. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly one of the most no- noteworthy. Absolutely. Yeah. Number one, mankind wins his first world title. Yeah, January fourth, nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. All right, this so, was the nail in the coffin for WCW. Yeah, this was um, this is a bit of a mistake on WCW's part. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about All that. Right, so back at this point in time, the way it worked was Raw was taped, or Raw was live, and then they taped the next week's Raw a- afterwards. Mm-hmm. So it would be one week live, one week taped, and so on. Um, I guess the WCW were, were able to get the spoilers well, for the yeah. Raw. I'm mm-hmm. sure it's not it that hard It was all over, yeah. Um, so what would what WCW would do is that 
like at a certain point in time they'd be like oh well you don't even need to bother yeah, going to raw because this is what's going on don't bother changing that channel um and was it tony Chavani? Ch- Chavani, Ch- 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 yeah he he was the one who said something about oh well it looks like mankind won the wwf title like yeah. that's gonna put butts in seats right and at that point in time they had just a slew of people switched over, over from nitro yep. to to uh to raw Mm -hmm. and on the raw side this was the match between mankind and the rock this had all your big stars in the main event well it was a lumberjack match i think well no the corporation was outside the ring and so was dx for mankind there was a lot of yeah i think there was a lot of people who weren't in those groups too i think yeah because it was just constant fighting back and forth that's austin came out leveled the rock with Mm -hmm. a chair and And that, that was how uh how yep. Mick Foley won the match. Mm-hmm. They it was a huge celebration. DX, everybody. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Cole was like, oh no, was it Michael Cole saying something like, "This is the greatest moment of his life" or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's possible, but um, I mean, this this was a feel good moment for Mick Foley, who's done everything for the company. Yep, put his body through hell. Yep, and uh, so yeah, it was a, it was a very good moment. It was a huge moment for the wwe Mm -hmm. and it wasn't even something they technically did nope that's the that's the funny part and wcw's counter to this main event was the finger poke of doom which is just too funny yeah it's probably one of the most ridiculous things Mm -hmm. uh kevin nash hulk hogan in a wcw world title match yep hogan gives him a nice little poke to the chest nash lays down Mm -hmm. that's your main event so, you know, that kind of speaks to what WCW was doing at the time. Yep. So it's probably a good thing that they didn't ma- last much longer. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Yeah, that was our top 10 WWE Raw moments. Yes, please tell us what you think about our list in the comments below. And uh, if you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.